stocks our strategists feel are poised to deliver positive returns are featured now in their Top Stock Picks of the Week. Hello everybody, Ben Rain here for Top Stock Picks and Zacks. Today we're looking at ServiceNow, which trades on the ticker NOW, or N-O-W obviously. So ServiceNow provides cloud-based digital workflow services and solutions to nearly 8,000 enterprise customers. Now aims to help automate digital workflows with a product portfolio designed to help boost workflow automation across areas like IT, HR, and beyond. The customers are scattered throughout nearly every area of the economy, from healthcare and technology to financial services, consumer products, and many more. ServiceNow's critical offerings and successful subscription model, which accounts for about 95% of its revenue, has been showcased by a decade straight of 20% or higher revenue expansion that took up around $300 million in sales in 2012 to $7.3 billion in sales in 2022. ServiceNow also topped our Q1 estimates, and its upbeat earnings revisions help it land a Zach's rank number one strong buy. So now we're going to go over to Zach's.com and then also one of our ZRS screens to check out some more of uh, its fundamentals and its growth outlook. All right, so now we're on Zach's.com, and we can see we're on the ServiceNow page. So along with its Zach's rank number one strong buy, we can see it's uh, in an industry that sits in the top 35% of all of our 250 Zach's industry, so that's always a good sign. You can see that A grade for growth and an F grade for value. So this is certainly a growth focused stock. So anyone who's looking for a value stock certainly doesn't want to look at ServiceNow, which we'll get to in a little bit as well. Now we'll go ahead and look at our detailed estimates page. We can see that we're calling for another roughly 22% revenue growth this year to get up to about $8.8 billion, And then another 21 plus percent growth next year to get up to about $10.7 billion. So just this continuation of massive double digit 20% or more revenue growth. And then on the bottom line, we're calling for 26% adjusted earnings growth and another 25% next year in 2024. And then we can see these upward earnings revisions. So that's a positive trend, which is why it has that stack rate number one strong buy. And then we can see also it beat by 16% last quarter and then it's beat by about 10% on average over the trailing four periods. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at some of its stock price performance. So we can see that the stock's been up about 200% in the last five years to more than just blow away the tech sectors. This is the Zach tech sector, which is up about 80%. And we'll go over the last decade just to give a better sense of how strong the stock's been. It's up over 1,100% compared to tech's 250% run. More recently, though, it's about neck and neck with the tech sector. So it's up about 40% compared to about 35%. We can see, still, still see that both are trading well below those late 2021 highs so still plenty of room to for upside if you're considering that we're not at this euphoric level where everything's trading at at fresh highs again and now we'll do a little bit of a technical overview of service now for anyone who's looking at that so we can see that it's trading above both its 50 day and its 200 day moving average and we saw it complete that golden cross right here which is where the shorter term moving average climbs above the longer data moving average so that's a positive sign for service now and it's also worth we'll just take a look once again just to hammer home that growth the company's done so that revenue growth is just rather stunning we can see that trajectory and to do another 20 percent growth both this year and next is the reason why when we look at its valuation levels we're just going to look at a peg ratio instead of even looking at forward earnings because it's trading at an insanely high multiple that wall street's been willing to pay because it's all focused on this growth so it's trading at about 7.8 in terms of peg ratio compared to tax 1.9. So certainly nowhere anyone would consider cheap, but it is trending downward, which is a good sign, uh, even as the stock has climbed up so much and it's trading well below those highs of about 32 over the last five years. So once again, n n nothing like a value stock, but Wall Street's been willing to pay up for this impressive, steady growth. ServiceNow has already and will continue to benefit from the constant wave of technological innovation that forces businesses from all industries and really all sizes to adapt and spend heavily, not just to keep pace, but also to thrive. Wall Street's obviously been willing to pay up for ServiceNow's growth for a really long time, and of the 31 brokerage recommendations that Zacks has, 26 are sitting at strong buys, so Wall Street's still really high on the stock. That said, it is also worth noting that the company reports its Q2 results on July 26. So some people might want to hold off if you're considering buying the stock in the near future to wait to see how those results actually come in. But that does it for me. Now I'm going to send it over to Kevin Cook. Thanks, Ben. My top pick is NVIDIA. There are only two types of investors, 
those who own NVIDIA and those who wish they did. I'm being a little facetious, but I'm going to explain a decision that both types of investors have to make coming up here in the next month before NVIDIA reports Q2 earnings in late August, around August 23rd, maybe. Um, and that is, do you buy and hold or do you wait for a dip? I'm going to, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, let me give you some information so that you can decide uh, and ma make your own decision, but I'll, I'll try and guide you here. So um, if you missed it, here was a video I did a couple weeks ago uh, about NVIDIA DGX, the workhorse of AI that will drive NVIDIA to a $2 trillion valuation, double from where it is now. Not in the, ne not in the next year, but in the next few years. Um, so that's why you want to be a long-term investor. This video only has like 1,300 views. You should check it out. It's 18 minutes long, um, so a little long, but there's a lot of good stuff in it. You can skip around, you know, the way YouTube lets you skip around to stuff. Uh, also, if you want to see the article version with some links, right, right down here in the YouTube description is the link to the article version. So you can go there. Uh, I've got more commentary, more explanations, you know, what DGX is um, and some other links to some good stuff. Okay, so what is the lay of the land here? Well, I just did a presentation for Zach's Ultimate members uh, this week on whether we're in a, just another bubble with with AI stock mania. Um, and if you're if you're not a Zach's Ultimate member, you can uh, email ultimate at zax.com to learn more. But one of the slides I referenced was um, the projections from McKinsey in 2018 about AI. And I think everybody really ignored this. I was excited about this because I was already a, a big NVIDIA fan of massively parallel architectures with GPUs um, and supercomputing and how gaming was driving the R&D for AI. And so when when McKinsey started throwing around numbers like potentially 15 trillion in annual impact across all analytical techniques, um, I was excited. I, and I think basically... Um, Investors ignored that. So this is this is a time not to ignore that, okay? Uh, because I think NVIDIA is going to beat and raise again in August. Okay, so why do I think that? Well, let's look at a few things. Um, you always go to the NVIDIA newsroom to learn. Just type NVIDIA newsroom. Go there at least once a month. These are the press releases just from the... Uh, this was the Computex event in... Uh, this was late May, right after, uh, right after earnings, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Earnings were May 24th. Computex was, you know, the week after the, the, these are just the press releases from that day and just so much good stuff in here. And I talked about, um, so NVIDIA comes out, let's look, let's look at the chart just so I can put this in perspective for you. So here's earnings, um, May 24th. Stock gaps up because NVIDIA raised guidance significantly, right? You know, Chad GPT was all the rage and enterprises were, were demanding more of these DGX boxes. Again, if you don't know what a DGX box is, go watch my last video um, and, and understand how they stack these GPUs uh, by the hundreds to create massively parallel architectures for machine learning, deep learning, and AI. Well, anyway, so May 24th, Jensen Wong raises guidance by a few billion for this for the quarter we're in. Um, and then a week later announces the new architectures. I mean, the 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 newest G DGX, uh the the GH two hundred, uh GH stands for Grace Hopper. Um, and if you don't know who Grace Hopper is, I'll tell you in a minute, but, uh, you know, go to the NVIDIA newsroom, read about this, understand, you know, what, what an exaflop is. An exaflop is, um, uh, a, quint a quintillion floating point operations per second. You know, that's a, that's a one with 18 zeros. Um, and so this is the processing power. Remember they built one of these for Tesla, for Elon Musk, uh, a few years ago, Tesla's building their own now. But now the point is, is that every enterprise wants one. In fact, uh, so after this was announced, NVIDIA could say, listen, we've already got Google, Meta, and Microsoft 
as our first three customers for for the the DGX uh, Grace Hopper 200 AI supercomputer. Uh, let's take a look at who Grace Hopper was, if you don't know. Uh, and this interests me because I, I'm actually writing a book called 13 Great Women of Science for teachers and and their uh, their female students to encourage more girls into math, science, technology, and engineering, all the STEM fields. Uh, but I didn't even include Grace Hopper because I started the book two years ago and I didn't know who she was and I was just going to do the 13 Great Women of Science. I had Lovelace in there who was the uh, 19th century uh, math uh, whiz who helped create the first uh, computer, basically, with, ba with Charles Babbage. But Grace Hopper was in the Navy. She was, uh, you know, she had a d degrees in math, and uh, she did some formative stuff with early computers um, in the 1950s. And so that's why NVIDIA chose to name their latest powerhouse uh, GPU card after her. All right. Um, let's just take a look at where NVIDIA has come from. These are actual earnings going back, um, or revenues rather, going back uh, to last year. Now we're we're in fiscal year 24, so so which ends in January. So that's why we're in Q2, which ends in July, May, uh, May June, July, is this Q2 of fiscal 24. Um, and so, you know, why did NVIDIA sell off so much? Well, here was the here was a peak in revenues for a quarter, um, Q1 of fiscal 23, uh, over eight billion, uh, and then we had the slide. You know, we're we're uh, <laughs> we're in the bear market. Uh, crypto's uh, going to heck in a handbasket, and you know, uh, enterprises are scaling back, whatever. But uh, you're just going to see this continue to go up, and this this is how this is why after. May 24th earnings and the Computex event in late May that estimates, revenue estimates for NVIDIA leaped by over 40% for both this year and next year. And I think you're going to, we're not going to see a 40% leap again um, in August after they were beaten raise, but you're, we're going to see estimates continue to move higher. And so that's why, that's how NVIDIA gets to right now, uh, next next fiscal year estimates are near 55 billion. I think you're going to see that go into the 60s easily uh, because of enterprise demand. Right? It's not just Google, Meta, and Microsoft. It's the Fortune 500 that needs this processing power. All right. What else did I want to show you here? So um, here, Nvidia blog. I mentioned Nvidia Newsroom. Go to the Nvidia blogs. If you don't know what a digital twin is, um, that uh, it. Jensen Wong is all about simulation because with AI, you can simulate everything. In fact, he'll be the first to tell you, they simulate all of their chip designs for extensively using AI and test everything before they send any designs to the foundry. And they've taught other corporations to do this. They, 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 they helped BMW reinvent their factories uh, based on uh, simulation by creating a digital twin. So uh, no... Uh, no shortage of stuff to learn. Um, oh, I mentioned, okay, yeah. You know, here's Barron's on May 30th after Computex. New, new AI supercomputer is a game changer. Google, Meta, Microsoft will be first users. Um, in the presentation I did for Zach's Ultimate members uh, that, this week about whether we're in an AI bubble, I highlighted McKinsey Research, the latest. This is from June of just this, just this year. And... Uh, if you just search Google generative AI, McKinsey or something like that, um, I just want to show you some of these numbers. So uh, generative AI's impact on productivity could add trillions of dollars in value to the global economy. I mean, it's just that it's a tech super cycle I talked about in 2017. Efficiency, productivity, in innovation, disinflation, and exponential acceleration, the, the convergence of technologies that Peter Diamandis talks about in his book, The Future is Faster Than You Can. Then you think, all right, let's see what else I wanted to show you here. Um, oh, um, if you go to NVIDIA Investors, then you can take a look at this presentation, which is uh, really cool. I'm going to blow this up real quick to show you, show you some cool slides here. Um, this is There's only like 14 slides. So to become familiar, I mean, th here's a key concept. When you, when you talk about CUDA, CUDA stands for a Compute Unified Device Architecture. 
in uh, Jensen Wong, not only does he surround himself with the top engineering talent in the world, just like Elon Musk does uh, for Tesla, but in SpaceX, but um, he evangelizes the developers. He know he's been doing this for years. He knows how to get to the the engineers and software developers that are gonna take CUDA software and uh, you know implement it for machine learning capabilities uh, inside organizations, whether it's a university, um, you know, a scientific institute, or a Fortune 1000 company. And so, you know, th this is this is uh, you know how he evangelizes at the at the at the grassroots, so to speak. Uh, lots of good stuff in here. Let's take a look. Here, here's some DGX boxes. This is like, this is anywhere between, um, I mean, this is, uh, the, here, here are dozens of DGX boxes all stacked together, depending on how you count them in these rows, um, which represent between 400 and 800 GPUs. And this is, this is the kind of stacks that corporations want to buy. Each DGX box, which has eight GPUs, costs at least $100,000. Some are $150,000 probably for, um, you know, for this setup. And, and look what NVIDIA is doing with science. This is one of my favorite things is, you know, drug discovery, genomics, uh, medical devices, imaging, uh, scanning, screening for cancer, that, all that kind of stuff. And then you look at what they're doing in auto. Well, here's Omniverse enables di digitalization across automotive life cycle. That's huge. Uh, making cars more intelligent. And this is a cool slide. Look at this. So, um, this is the sort of the forward pipeline. They, they already have 14 billion in design wins that have a six year horizon, right? So I, I, a lot of this stuff, I don't know how much this is already built into estimates. Um, major uh, partners there. All right, let's back out of that. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to show you here. Let me take a look, double check it all my slides. Um, well, we'll just take a look at the, at the detailed estimates right now. So bookmark uh, where detailed estimates are now. NVIDIA is exact number one rank, obviously. Um, so here's how estimates leaped, you know, from basically we were at, uh, you know, six months ago, this was 30 billion. Now it's 42 billion. And this was 37 billion. And, and so this is the dramatic growth. You're going to see these numbers bump up. So bookmark 42 and 55 in your mind for, for revenues. Um, and this is why NVIDIA can trade at 20 times sales. And this is why it will go to $2 trillion in the next three years. All right. That's it for my uh, quick overview of NVIDIA. Um, oh, I almost forgot to tell you what I'm doing with NVIDIA, buy, hold, or sell. I'm holding. We have about 250% gains from the October lows near 120. Um, if you don't own any NVIDIA, I would buy some here. Maybe buy a half a position. Because... In the worst case that I see, some kind of hiccup or disappointment, something analysts didn't see, you know, and then maybe they don't raise as much, you know, the beaten raise isn't, isn't as big. I think the stock does pull back, but uh, maybe you see the 50-day moving average, you know, at, 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 you know, 370 or something. Uh, maybe it gets to 350, but I don't see it coming back to fill this gap. Uh, this was the, uh, the earnings gap. Um, and so you're looking at 300, 320, you're not going to see those levels again. So, um, if you don't own any, buy some, and if there is a disappointment, you can get ready to buy some between 350 and 375. Thanks for joining us again in this week's top stock picks for more Zach's ideas and uh, special promotions. We have check out the link below, uh, zacks.com forward slash promo.